here in the Northwest Atlantic. I'm actually in Nova Scotia, in uh, Atlantic Canada. I'm actually looking at, out to sea, out to um, in tidal embayment across the across the way there. But within the within this particular part of the world, it's influenced by the cold uh, Labrador current that comes down from the Arctic regions. Um, and the, the continental weather that we have over in the west off, off the main North American continent means that this um, particular region is quite cold during the winter and as you can see um, there is lots of snow on the ground at the moment here. Now as well as the, the land um, having uh, cold conditions and it's, it's about minus 14 here at the moment, um, the sea also is very cold just offshore and Traditionally, there's uh, been uh, uh, the, the, the area offshore Nova Scotia and Newfoundland and Labrador has been one that's been plagued by icebergs and ice flows and so on. And indeed, as I flew over the sea coming here, um, there, were, there was plenty of evidence uh, down below on the sea surface of ice flows and some one fa fantastic mosaics of different uh, slabs of ice coming together. Really, it's a great opportunity to be able to fly over these um, areas of uh, open sea uh, during the day when the sun is shining and you get a very, really good um, view of the, uh, of the sea below. Now in this particular view you can see that the ice is swirling around and the reason why it's swirling around is because it's being drifted by currents and, uh, within the sea. So sea currents are, are swirling it round and it produces these wonderful um, patterns on the sea surface. Now because of this we, we call this type of ice drift ice because it drifts around on the sea currents. And it has different concentrations. Um, here we can see that the, um, the ice is becoming more concentrated. In the previous uh, shots it was perhaps up to 25% concentration, but here is well over that and probably over 50% in terms of concentration. And we call this uh, grey-white ice because you can see gr both grey and white ice um, within this. Um, and that's because it's fairly young ice, it's, it's this year's ice, uh, and it's possibly 10, 15 uh, centimetres or so uh, thick, maybe, maybe a little bit more. Now as, you ca as we flew towards the Canadian uh, shoreline from the open ocean, the ice becomes more concentrated, and you can see in this particular uh, clip ridges forming with linear, um, uh, linear open pit parts of water in between. So it's a fantastic opportunity to, to look out of the, of the, of the plane and, and, and have a look at the features that are down there below. Now here we can see, the, um, again, there's the drift ice in, in lovely patterns, the concentration is quite high, um, and, but there are some big open patches of water. Now these open patches of water are important for climate change because they act as heat exchangers uh, so that uh, uh, ocean heat can escape through them. Whereas in other areas like here where the, um, the ice is more continuous, then that acts as a, as a sort of an insula insulator keeping ocean heat in. Um, so, the, so the extent of sea ice is really important. Now in terms of observing sea ice, uh, before the 1970s, we had to rely on ship data and, coast, and coastal port information on the extent of sea ice, and we use that historic data in climate change studies. But since the 1970s, we've been able to use satellite uh, information, in particular uh, passive microwave data, that gives us information about sea ice uh, cover and also uh, the, its extent and its thickness. Now here we're just off the coast of Nova Scotia and you can see the land just at the bottom of the uh, shot there and th this ice is, some of this ice is actually stuck to the land and because of that we call it land fast ice um, and that's really important for locals because they can go out onto this ice to hunt and to fish and so on but you can see that it is being broken away. So um, it's a fantastic uh, view from, from up in the aeroplane of the, of the sea ice um, but of course we are worried about what uh, global warming and climate change is doing uh, to sea ice and the effects it will have. But with uh, climate change and our worries about global warming and the increasing of uh, greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, we're seeing a dramatic decrease in the, in the amount of um, ice that's forming on the sea um, and actually being uh, retained through the Arctic summer. And so we're having a decrease in the amount of um, sea ice uh, at any one particular point of time, um, actually in the Arctic region. 
Now that's important for climate change because of feedbacks. Now sea ice, um, which is the same colour as this snow here, of course, is able to reflect sunlight. It has an albe high albedo, um, meaning it just it's, it reflects the sunlight back out into the atmosphere and into space. So it has a direct effect on, on the Earth's climate system in that it, is, um, it leads to a cooling because the sun's energy is actually reflected back off into space. Now, um, if you diminish the amount of sea ice then this, that has this cooling effect on the Earth's climate and you open it up to dark water, um, which and dark, dark colours has a, a low albedo so it can absorb the sun's energy, then that means the ocean will warm up so much more than if there was sea ice covering it. Which means, of course, it contributes to our worries about global warming and climate change. Indeed, um, since the satellites have been collecting data since about 1978, um, we see a decade-on-decade decade decrease in sea ice, sea ice extent of about 2.7% uh, decrease every decade. Now that um, is, 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 seems quite uh, of concern, but uh, it's even more concerning to find that within the, 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 sub, the ice that remains throughout the summer is also decreasing by 7.4%. So 7.4% less ice is uh, surviving the summer uh, melt. Now sea ice uh, has a big albedo effect, but it's not just the sea ice that we're concerned about in terms of the cooling effect of albedo. Clouds are also uh, very important for albedo, and the cloud albedo effect is, is, is one of these um, big sort of unknown factors, if you like, in climate change modelling. Because clouds, first of all, are difficult to, to measure. Here we can see a blanket cloud across the Atlantic Ocean. But from a satellite um, measuring this, they'd only see the top clouds, whereas from underneath ground-based um, uh, measurements, you'd only see the lower clouds. So it is quite difficult to measure. Um, and, of course, sort of uh, uh, situations like this, where we have lots of little cumulus clouds uh, dotted around, it's very difficult to measure. But nevertheless... Um, uh, these also, uh, because of their white colour, play an important part in global cooling. Um, now, under climate change, if we see a decrease in cloud cover, then that will increase the, uh, the, the global temperature or contribute to increasing global temperature. But if the warmer, a warmer world produces more moisture in the atmosphere, we may see more clouds that actually create a more albedo effect that helps to lo uh, lower and moderate the effects of global warming. A lot of uncertainty, but a fascinating subject.